Treasure Planet is one of the biggest box office bombs in Disney's past, with a budget of 140 million and only making a portion of that back. Now, I remember watching this back in the day and liking it, but it wasn't one of my favorites. But recently, I revisited the film, and man, this thing slaps. Like, honestly, it's great. I was surprised how much I loved it. Not only did I appreciate it more this time around, I can also see that potential that fans have been talking about for a live action remake for years. I think it would be perfect for this and has all the makings to be, dare I say, the first good one. But before we get started, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN that allows you to protect your data from being breached, which is great, but I mainly use it to switch over my IP address so it appears like I'm from other countries, so I can watch different movies on Netflix. Surfshark gives you the opportunity to watch whatever you'd like, no matter what country you're in. Either way, without even switching your IP, it just makes sense in today's age to put up that barrier to protect your data on your computer. And Surfshark allows you unlimited devices. So use promo code BRIANSEEKER to get 83% off and an extra three months free. They give you a 30 day money back guarantee, so there's no risk in trying right now. So go to the link in the description below for more details. As for the castings, we're gonna tackle every notable character within the film. Although many will be fully CGI, I wanna have actors drive that performance and really bring that energy of that character. So let's cast a live action treasure planet. First up, we have the main character of the film. Jim Hawkins. Now for some reason the internet has decided that Tom Holland is the perfect choice for Jim. And although I can see it in his looks, in my mind he really just doesn't have that edge, that roughness. Tom Holland is kind of a nice guy, and I think that really shines through in every single performance I've ever seen him on screen. Also, he's 25 now, so he's aging out of the role a little bit. I instead want someone who has looks, but acts like they're on the verge of going to juvie. I want an actor who can make it believable that they are past the point of return but still come back and see the errors in their way. That's why I went with Tanner Buchanan, who is best known for his role in Cobra Kai, but hasn't completely broken into the mainstream yet. He nails his role of Robbie within the show, where he plays that bad apple with a chip on his shoulder. You two get together the second I was gone and wait a week to make it look good. So now I know why you stopped writing. I stopped writing because you never answered. Yeah, well, it's kind of hard to write back in between getting my face busted. He's shown it all in Cobra Kai that he has what it takes to play Jim Hawkins. He's very athletic and does well within the fight scenes, which is great because Jim's role actually has a lot of physicality to it. He has the look and is still young enough to play a believable teenager. So Tanner Buchanan as Jim Hawkins. Next up we have Dr. Doppler, Jim's really only true friend from the beginning. He's a longtime friend of Jim's mother and although there is some clear admiration there, he finds himself in this journey and finds love with Captain Amelia. He's a man of science and a doctor, even though not in the traditional sense. A doctorate is not the same thing. You can't help people with a doctorate. You just sit there and you're useless. He needs to be clumsy and a little unsure of himself, but eventually fall into that place. I want someone who isn't going to oversell this. Someone who can bring subtlety and nuance to a character. If this character is done over the top, it just will be cringy. That's why I went with Martin Freeman, who has shown us in The Hobbit, as well as other roles, that he can really nail that unsure, talking too fast dialogue, which feels right at home for this character. Lacerations. Evisceration. Incineration. Oh, I am at the flesh off your bones in the blink of an eye. Nope. He can play the nerdy and the out of touch, but also lean into his comedy that he's done in the past when he requires it. So Martin Freeman as Dr. Doppler. If we're talking about Doppler, it only makes sense that we tackle Captain Amelia next, the strong-willed, certain of herself, leader of our crew. She has a persona that is unwavering. She has a moral compass and is rooted in her beliefs in the structure she has set out. We need an actress who can hold her own among the men and really show she deserves that respect and that allegiance. That's why I'm with Haley Atwell, who has shown us in Agent Carter she can do just that. No, it's got to be something more than that. If Chanko has a plan, he brought us into Russia. He tricked us into bringing him into this country. There's something specific that he is targeting. We just have to find out what it is. She has that forceful voice and that personality without being too harsh. I can see her doing that tough love exterior, but also see her in that fragile place later on in the film. I also can see her working really well with Martin Freeman. So Haley Atwell as Captain Amelia. 
Next up, we have Mr. Arrow, the loyal follower of Captain Amelia and her right-hand man. He has clearly had a relationship with Amelia that is built on trust, and they've worked together for some time. He is precise and calculated and likes things done his way. His loss really affects Jim and Amelia, and we need to see that bond that has been set up even before those cameras start rolling. I went with Christopher Jackson, who is best known for playing George Washington in Hamilton, where he shows that he can have that grace under pressure, as well as that dominating voice and presence. He has the frame and the look, and again, I could see him really selling that relationship between him and Haley Outwell. So Christopher Jackson as Mr. Arrow. If we're talking about Mr. Arrow, we should really talk about Screw, the second antagonist within the film. And of course, he would be fully CGI, being a crab spider-like creature. But as I said before, I want an actor to drive that performance. Scroop has that pirate-like nature with that cruel, greedy exterior. I end up going with Richard Blake, who has played the Night King in Game of Thrones, but he has that face, that voice, and the menace for a role like this one. I'm not here to make you happy. Hmm? I'm not here to brighten your dismal day. And I am certainly not here to elicit an amused response. I am here to end your miserable fucking life. So Richard Blake, S group. Next up we have Ben, the manic robot who really befriends Jim and Morph. He is over the top and really can be too much. He ends up being a true friend to Jim and unlike other robots out there, he has personality in spades. He isn't afraid to speak up and has really been driven a little insane from his time alone on the planet. I end up going with Charlie Day, who could really knock this one out of the park. His voice and his cadence is made for a role like this. He does manic unlike anyone else out there. Pepe Sylvia, this name keeps coming up over and over again. Every day, Pepe's mail's getting sent back to me. Pepe Sylvia, Pepe Sylvia. I look at the mail, but well, this whole box is Pepe Sylvia. So I say to myself, I gotta find this guy. I gotta go up to his office. I gotta put his mail in the guy's goddamn hands. Otherwise, he's never gonna get it. It's gonna keep coming back down here. So I go up to Pepe's office, and what do I find out, man? What do I find out? There is no Pepe Sylvia. The man does not exist. He has his own original blend of comedy, and I think it would work perfectly for Ben. So Charlie Day as Ben. Next up, we have Jim's mother. A smaller role, but one that is definitely needed to set up the story. Now, Jim's mother is a strong woman who has taken on a lot, but she's kind of at her wit's end with Jim. She really doesn't know what to do with him. I went with Michelle Monaghan. She's got that strength and character that helps me buy into her being a self-made woman, but also she can have that softness for Jim. Well, after weighing everything we discussed, I think our starting point should be looking at the UN declarations of the rights of the child. So Michelle Monaghan as Sarah Hawkins. Lastly, we have Silver, really the character that this whole movie hangs on. If Silver doesn't work as a character, the whole movie fails. We need an actor who can do a lot of things here, be incredibly menacing and make you buy into him being the big bad, but also someone who can be soft and comforting and build a relationship with Jim. We need someone with that voice, but also that presence on screen. Now it's easy to look at the Pirates franchise and pull out an actor who'd work great here. Someone like Ian McShane would be a great choice, but having already played Blackbeard in the past kind of makes him not the most interesting choice. Or even Javier Bardem, who would be great again, but still, he's been in Pirates and we've already seen that side of him. Still, with those considered, Idris Alba is my first choice for this role. Don't get me wrong, I know he doesn't look a lot like the character, but I think he has the exact energy we need here. He can play that menacing. Aha, I'm only taking the brave. I'm not taking the scary. I'm not taking no guns. He can play that soft and understanding. I would recite the gunslinger's creed. Calms the heart and the mind. I haven't spoken it for years. And I really think he has the acting capability to sell that transition here. I could see a band of pirates following him, but also him questioning himself. I think CGI and makeup could make him heavier and look more like the character. Honestly, I think it works either way. So Idris Alba as Silver. So there is my cast for the live action Treasure Planet. Next up, we have Atlantis, so stay tuned for that. But let me know your choices for these roles in the comments down below. I always love reading them. As well as let me know what franchise you'd like to see next. A lot of people are pushing for Spider-Man, as well as some want me to dive back into Harry Potter. Let me know in the comments below. But as always, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.